The Forest is a great survival sandbox game, but the mechanics are nuanced. There's many things that I wish I knew before my friends and I picked it up. I remember looking up tutorials online, but a lot of them seem to have a lot of spoilers. I'm going to try to keep that to a minimum. This video is only going to cover some basic, non-obvious mechanics. I'm not going to be touching anything related to the story, and I'm not going to be showing anything or talking about anything that, for example, you don't see outside of the trailers for this game. So before we start, if you're planning on playing multiplayer, the game works peer-to-peer, -peer, meaning when you click host and create a new game, the world and your character information is stored on your computer. Your friend's information, and their character save, however, is stored on your friend's computer. It is not linked to a Steam account, and if a friend switches or wipes their computer often, they will need to transfer their save. Be sure to turn down your sensitivity. Mine is set at zero and it is still too high. Go for zero or one and adjust it when you get in game. If you're playing multiplayer and you want trees to respawn, which I recommend, as the host, just flick it on in the gameplay settings. But really, everyone should turn this on anyways. If you destroy tree stumps, the trees will not respawn. Outside of that, there isn't much more to mention settings-wise that affect the game. In the beginning, have fun exploring around a bit and not looking up any guides, but later on, maybe two days in, don't feel bad about opening up an online map which will show you where everything is and give you some actual goals. It is easy to miss things sometimes when exploring and some things are not obviously found. All items in the game respawn, with the exception of trees by default. Meaning, do not worry too much about conservation of materials. Oftentimes, if you exit and return to an area, all items in that area will respawn. In multiplayer, this goes even further. Know that with few exceptions, most items exist separately or client-side for each player. Meaning, if one player picks up an item, it is usually still there for the other players to pick up, so don't worry about being greedy. This game tries very hard to be intuitive, but falls short of your expectations as a gamer. For example, some items require you to hold the item out to use it. Like, for example, the pouch that you make early on to collect berries. Otherwise, you can only eat them off the bush. Or, if you want to change something about an item you're holding, for example, what's being used with it, you might have to physically look down at the item to do so. While it makes sense, it also doesn't, so keep that in mind. Other times, it's not intuitive at all. For example, the collection of leaves. You have to swing at bushes to get them, but you don't get any from trees? Don't worry, you'll get the hang of things quickly. Also, aiming in this game is an actual skill. The aiming assistance you are given is off for many of the items. Just know that it's consistent in its own way and you can get good relatively quickly. It doesn't work like most other games. When you open it, it shows you everything you have picked up. This game doesn't work off a weight system. There is room to carry everything that you'll find, but there is often a limit to the amount of things that you can carry. For example, in the beginning, you can carry up to 10 sticks and 5 rocks. There are a couple items in the game that you want to craft as soon as possible because they increase the amount of these that you can carry. Seek these out quickly so you can build faster and make less foraging trips in the future. To craft something that isn't a structure, simply right-click an item to send it to the center. When you do, a small gear appears. Hover over it to see all of the things that you can craft with it. Right-click the other items that you want to combine, and assuming everything is there, click the gear and the item will have been crafted. When you open your inventory or right-click it out of the center, it will be put into its designated spot. This game gives you hotkeys for items, but never tells you how to set them. To set items to your hotkeys, combine the backpack with the item that you want to set Click the gear and select the key that you want to hotkey it with. In multiplayer, if you want to share an item with your friends, you can't just drop it on the ground. When you first start your game in multiplayer, make sure everyone explores the starting area and finds the tray item because you don't spawn with it. If you want to share something with your friend, combine it with the tray and your character will hold it out so your friend can take it from you. When you open up your building menu, you will eventually learn what tab contains what, so don't worry how some things just seem to be oddly classified. When you click on the item that you want to build, you can then place down the ghost of the building, as it's called in the settings where you can actually change its color. If the building that you're trying to build contains multiple parts, you can click to place the current piece. Some buildings have snapping, so you can make sure that you're making perfect squares. 
Some buildings have alternative states. You can press R to cycle through them once you've confirmed the building. The game has a couple pre-made structures, so for example whole houses, and a couple pre-made pieces, referred to as basic building structures. Stick to the custom building options for the most part, but feel free to play around with all of them in their ghost states. Placing ghosts costs nothing, and in multiplayer, your friend will only be able to see the ghost once you confirmed it with E. Once the ghost is placed, you can start pressing E to start building it piece by piece. It tells you everything that you need to build it, and your friends are able to pitch in. Sometimes, there is a glitch where your friends can't see what they contributed. Don't worry, it was counted, and the host should be able to see the actual progress. If you hold down Q, you will destroy the ghost. This can be done at any point up until completion. However, if you do, you will only get a small fraction of the resources that you put in back. Last few notes. Benches restore stamina, birdhouses collect feathers, even though you can get feathers by killing birds and then picking up the feathers that fly off of them. Lamps are permanent sources of light, and also, feel free to invest in zip lines for logs. In the current state, make sure that it is either within rendering distance that the logs finish their trip, or you have somebody at the other end to catch the logs in multiplayer. Hold food in your hand and press Q to place it on something. You can also press R to cycle through the options of the things that you can place instead of holding it in your hand. One of the first things you'll notice in this game is that you can't pick up food off the fire and store it in your inventory. Why? I don't know, but it's how it is. If you want portable edible food, build a drying rack. They are cheap and they're the best way to stave off hunger. Only small ponds can be used to drink from and fill containers. Lakes and oceans cannot. Sometimes you have to come at it from a weird angle to fill something with water or to drink it. Just keep trying, you'll eventually get it. Honestly, just build many water catchers. I know some of you have played these kinds of games before and don't want to suffer through a choice that you couldn't have possibly known was bad your first time. I understand, so here's the non-spoiler gist. The ground and trees are not safe from everything, but problems are manageable. Just save often and invest in stone. Water is safe from pretty much everything. Without spoiling anything, just know that the AI in this game, specifically behavior, is a high focus for the developers. Treat everything like an animal, meaning take note of their hierarchies and their threat levels. Also, if you're curious to know what difficulty to start playing on, just start on the easiest difficulty and you can work your way up through subsequent playthroughs. That's all I can think of. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment in case anything got patched or if I forget something. Just, you know, avoid spoiling anything for the people reading it. And have fun playing the forest.